we thought it would be a nice gesture, since Michael was so important to everyone at Index, to uh, have a few people share remembrances. And so um, I will facilitate, uh, there's a handful of people, Tom's looking at his notes, uh, uh, who will share remembrances. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Phyllis is here. And maybe some people you don't know, uh, Lisa Hirschman, who's the new CEO of Hammer & Company. Joe Tischler, who's been advising Phyllis, and Ms. Allison. She's on her way. She's on her way. So Allison, maybe anybody else that I'm forgetting from the family side? Because there's some interest among um, many of the people like Phyllis and, and her family in learning about the, the business side of Michael's life. And that's why we're video recording so that uh, they can, we can share it with them. Um, with that, I'm going to um, cue a number of people and then we'll have a few more. We'll, we'll try to keep this to a few minutes each and try and keep it to maybe 20 minutes or a half hour overall. But uh, Steve Stanton is one of the people we wanted to have talk and he's uh, got a, a flight or something to go to, so he has to be <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Well, being, being the first is a little daunting um, to talk about Mike, but let me start. Um, there's a, an old movie, um, Broadcast News, with Holly Hunter and William Hurt. And there's a scene where um, the two of them are together on some patio, and William Hurt is exasperated, and he looks at Holly Hunter and says, what's it like to be the smartest person in every room that you're in? <laughs> Expecting her to be embarrassed or humble. And instead she looks at him and says, it's horrible. <laughs> um, and the thing about Mike was he was typically the smartest person in any room that he was in. Um, his, his intellect and his capability, he was in a room with lots of smart people very often, but um, his brain worked differently, worked faster. Uh, and it was remarkable. To, uh, he wouldn't have said it was horrible. Uh, he would have said, um, it's okay. Uh, and then just gone on to deal with the topic. Um, the best way, I think, to remember Mike is to uh, tell stories, because that's how he worked. He was a teacher at heart. Um, everything in his core, I felt, and I probably saw him a thousand times speaking. And at his heart, he was a speaker and he told stories. A lot of his stories came from the Talmud, and one of his stories typifies um, the way he dealt with things. Um, the story takes place in the old country of Poland, and two farmers are debating about a, a cow, and they go to the local rabbi who serves as the justice of the peace, and the first uh, farmer goes in and states his case, and the rabbi says, you're right, you're right, he ushers the guy out. And the second farmer comes in and states his case, and makes his argument, and the rabbi ushers him out and says, you're right, you're right. The rabbi's wife comes in and says, what are you doing? Um, you you said, told the first one he's right, you told the second one he's right, you can't do that. You said, you're right, you're right. <laughs> um, and you know, Michael uh, had an ability to teach from all sources. He'd quote from the movies, he'd quote from the Talmud, he quote from Latin, he quote from the scripture, um, and he taught, and rock and roll, <laughs> absolutely. And he used everything um, as a way to communicate his passions. And he used not just his mind, which is extraordinary, but his emotions, his humor, to capture and uh, keep people entertained. He could talk for four days and keep an audience in their seats, not running to the bathroom, not, not going anywhere, and continue to have as much energy at the end of the fourth day as he did at the beginning. And that's remarkable, to be that smart and that caring and that multifaceted. And so a toast to Mike and, uh, for his capabilities in his memory. Cheers. Cheers.